Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Happy New Year, 2024. Let's start looking for the uh, aliens. <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be fun. All right, a uh, few changes are going to happen. I'm going to try to grow the channel a little bit. Uh, so that means it's going to be a lot less advanced stuff uh, because people hear what they understand, right? So, the, you know, they don't understand a lot of the advanced stuff. Um, so you guys are probably going to be in a, uh, I'm going to have you all in a special room and then all the new guys are going to be in all the other rooms and uh and i'll be continuing that with you guys okay uh the prices are gonna, probably going to come down um eventually as the channel grows uh, you guys are all going to be free uh and you'll be lifers you can stay here as long as you like so again you know people hear what they understand and a lot of the advanced stuff they understand the words, but they don't know what the fuck they mean. So, uh, and I don't want to sit here and explain it and blah, blah, blah. Uh, because I'll be explaining the same thing over and over and over to a lot of people. And, and I, I don't want to do that. Uh, too time consuming. I, I have a full time job um, and it's actually boring. Um, so what am I going to replace in order to convey information? Uh, I'm going to use relationships. Uh, something that has intrigued me recently and, um, um, you know, it's intrigued me, you know, my kids are teenagers and early twenties, they're going out, I'm giving advice, <laughs> they're showing me these, uh, dating, uh, uh, relationship videos and I'm like, mm, yeah, okay. Uh, so I've been spending some time with that and I, it occurred to me how similar they some of these things are with markets. Um, you know, I've talked a little bit about it. They are, uh, you know, markets are bipolars are, uh, as are relationships and dating, right? The best tip I can give to people about dating, don't. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> it's a shit show out there. <laughs> anyway, um, so... Uh, I think I can use that. I think I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm going to try. I think I can use that in order to push information about markets that I want uh, people to understand. So I'll, I'll see how that goes. But you guys are all uh, um, well more than welcome to help. You're more than welcome to give suggestions and feedback. And uh, you know we're going to scope it. I'm going to scope it, you know, ch ch chisel, chisel it down until we get it right, okay? So let's start off with, uh, you know, the new year, um, looking at the NASDAQ, and, um, you know, it's double topping, okay? That's the first thing you're going to notice. Um, it's a fairly big double top. Um, it's um, it's kind of scary, if it does start to break down, uh, a huge fucking M pattern. This is a weekly chart, okay? Um, so we'll talk. We'll talk a little bit about it. I put the 252-day moving average, uh, and the reason I've done that—that's a yearly average. So we want to see how it performed over the year. Obviously, it did really, really good, um, and and I want to point out how rarely, rarely has it fallen below the 252-day uh, moving average. That's the blue line here, okay? How rarely it's done that. Um, you know, usually when you get these down moves, the recovery lasts a while. Now, this was the longest uh, uh, stock market expansion in history, all right? Um I say uh, stock, it's um, uh, economic expansion in history. Um, touched it a few times here, as you can see, and then it started to pop. Now, this is actually COVID. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? The entire world fucking blew up, and it just barely made it below, and then, okay, la, la, la. You would think, you like, if, if you didn't know anything about, you know, history, 
you would think this is COVID, right? That the world came to an end. And you would think this is 2008. And in reality, it's actually, you know, the opposite. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Um, the recovery, uh, so-called recovery, uh, was uh, not very recoverable, <laughs> right? So this, I, I guess we can say from here on up, it was a recovery, but it, it fully retraced as we expected it. So uh, let's take a look and think about what happened here. What is all this about, okay? It's got to do with higher interest rates and inflation. Very simple, okay? What's the difference between this and all of this? All of that. What's the difference? Difference is low rates, low inflation, okay? A lot of money pumping, a lot of private debt, and that created a very huge bull market. And then when everything started to reverse, you got the correction. Since the correction, it's starting to push higher again. All right. Now, how much of that is going to be sustainable versus not being sustainable? Well, most of this time here, right in here, this part there, was that unemployment was falling, uh, the economy was improving, there was people coming into the labor force, so everything was fine. From here to here, this part right there, that part was euphoria. We were already at max employment, everything was firing on all cylinders, so what that ended up being was euphoric, and that's when they started pumping those deficits. Now, when you pump deficits at maximum employment with zero interest rates, you're going to get euphoria, and that's what we got. So then what happened after that? Well, we got the COVID, and then they pumped trillions more on top of that. Now, remember, in 2019, that's right here, right there. Okay, in 2019, um, deficits were about 21 trillion dollars. Today, we are 34 trillion dollars. We literally pumped 14, 13, 14 trillion dollars into the market, into the economy, I should say. But you know, it goes into the market. Okay, uh, in just three years. Massive amount of fucking money printing. Massive. Now remember, the fiscal year ends in October. So it might have been like $22 trillion in 2019, whatever. Um, you get my point. Let's not you know, nitpick. I'm, I don't feel like searching it up. But it was something like $21, $22 trillion. And we were 34. Is it 14 13 $12 trillion? It's a lot of fucking money for three years. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was a lot of money that was pumped in. Um, and, and yet, uh, we did get that big fucking move to the upside here, this part, right? But then it all came back down, all right? Uh, and then since then, we've retraced it back up. But I'm telling you that for, for 12, 13 trillion dollars that were pumped in, the stock market should be like fucking up here somewhere. And it's not. And it's not. Okay, so... Obviously, interest rates are very important. I think we all understand that now. You've seen it. You lived it. You traded it, uh, which is great for you guys because a lot of you guys never felt that over here, right? The, the whole time we've been together, that's never happened. So um, it, it, it's it's a different ball game. It's a different market. Everything is different uh, when rates start to compete with earnings yield. Now, purely from a deficit standpoint, from, a, you know, the amount of money that is going to get pumped into the economy going forward from here, which is going to be high, by the way, um, should, all else being equal, should push markets higher. However, uh, if we go into a recession, uh, you know, that's not going to be the case, okay? Um They'll probably increase deficits more, you think? I don't know. They're already very high, okay? 
um, they'll lower interest rates that will help the markets a little bit but earnings yields will be falling and and the question is going to be and this is the big one how much are earnings yield going to fall the the nice thing demographically is that you know prime age labor force right now is where the uh, 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 the most amount of population working right now which is very high I think 80 something percent um, that that's gonna help that's gonna help unless it's really bad recession that's gonna help the markets kind of sustain themselves because they're they're gonna they're gonna spend a lot of money right they're 33 34 years old they gotta get houses furniture babies strollers cars you know it's a lot of shit so they'll they'll, they'll help they'll help, they'll help. Um, but again how deep is the recession going to be uh, the other the other question is going to be how much are loans private loan private money creation gonna impact the markets during a recession they've been flat recently they've been flat delinquency rates right how much are they going to start to spike uh, how hard how fast how long okay um, so you know what's going to what part of the economy is going to start to really blow up and we're going to name it whatever that is uh, name the recession after or that part of the economy that really blows up I don't think it's going to be banking of course banking is going to have difficulties but I don't think that's going to be the cause um, uh, if you're talking about real estate, it's kind of hard to say anything about real estate and not associated with banking. So, <clears throat> especially as rates come down, that's going to help it. Uh, so, I think it's going to be the zombies, as I've said before. I think zombie companies are really going to start to blow, and then they're going to they're going to mesh that in with AI and they start blaming AI for it, which I it's it's not going to be the case, but they'll make some kind of connection. Uh, again, I'm, this is pure speculation, right? Don't go out and start, start trading something like this. But, um, you know, something like that, something weird, okay? But we have to get into a recession. How are we going to get into a recession if uh, unemployment uh, is so good? You know, it's, it's very difficult. So we have to be patient. Uh, for the recession and luckily I didn't call one <laughs> I feel good about that I didn't step in that pile of shit however I have been waiting for one all right all right so let me um I'm not sure what I was talking about before I don't edit edit these things uh, I had to do something all right so what do you do when your woman and i'm going to speak from a man's standpoint i'm not a woman so i can't talk but although they are similar um what do you do when your your, your girl leaves you right do you beg the bitch do you sorry <laughs> to the women or the asshole <laughs> um you know do you go begging you know well, let's say you were going out for a year two years whatever should you take her take her back you know if she does come back right so what does this have to do with markets i'll tell you what it has to do with markets that once a woman leaves you you don't collapse right you keep going you keep improving yourself you keep improving yourself you keep doing what you were supposed to do to begin with that would be the equivalent of you blowing out your account think of it like that or you had a number of bad trades and you just wiped out a lot of your uh, your capital right just because you stop trading doesn't mean you stop improving your trading whatever whatever got you to the point where you blew out your account obviously you did something wrong you didn't understand something so you go to to simulating uh simulator training okay you start you keep training you keep 
trying to learn more about trading. Uh, it's the same thing in a relationship. You, you, you learn more about yourself, what you did wrong, uh, what you did right, um, and, and you improve your, your, your job, your, your, your financial situation, your appearance, your fucking attitude. <laughs> if you were an asshole too much, don't be an asshole, don't be stubborn, don't be, you know, all those things. And enhance what you did good. Okay? And that's it. Now, you know, all relationships, nobody's perfect. And you're not going to be perfect. And she's not going to be perfect. And, and that's, that's the cost of doing business. It's the same thing in trading. You're, you're predicting the future. It's the same thing with relationships. You're predicting the future with this person. They're going to stay. They're not going to stay. You know, uh, is this somebody that I can, you know, build a kingdom with or not? Okay? You don't know. You have no idea. You don't know what kind of hormones are going to start changing. You don't know, you know, what kind of uh, sensations are going to start getting inside of them and start wondering, like, hmm, you know, maybe I can get better. So now let's talk about getting better. All right. Now, getting better is risking what you already have. Okay. And it's the same thing in markets. When you're trading a stock, everybody's like, okay, I'm going to sell this one. I made 3% or whatever the hell you made. And you're happy with that gain. And you're like, hmm, okay, I'm going to go find something better. I'm going to find someone better. It's the same thing. Um, and I'm going to, you know, improve uh, my relationship with somebody else because this guy sucks or this girl sucks or whatever. Okay. If you keep doing that enough, <laughs> you're going to end up an alpha widow okay what is an alpha widow an alpha widow whether it be a man or a woman is is a person that was an alpha male that was you know the number one the best one that you keep thinking about you still have an emotional attachment but you can never go back because that person doesn't want you right so then everybody else you're dating you're comparing to that person so, but you're a widow, you can't go back. So, you start to regret that you ever left that person. Uh, and you're like, damn, you know, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it's the same thing with stocks, right? If you start jumping around from stock to stock to stock to stock, and then, you know, you left Apple or Google, you know, and then you're like, oh, it's too high now, I can't get back in. It's, you know, I. You'll never get back in because it's always going to be too high. And you'll never think that it, it, it was as great as it was. Uh, and then you're just looking for the next Apple, the next Google. And then, you know, this kind of mindset uh, will destroy your account. Okay. You can't keep looking for the next best, greatest thing. Um, you, you just have to have your set of standards, you know, and then when you're in that stock, uh, you gotta, you gotta hold it. You gotta be patient. Sometimes you're gonna lose more than you should, uh, and sometimes you're gonna make a lot more than you, than you should or you thought. Okay. Um, now let's talk about age. Age. Uh, when you're younger, you're gonna date a lot more. Okay. So you're gonna have a lot more breakups. Um, the relationships are not gonna be as long. Uh, so they won't be as painful, uh, although eventually <laughs> you'll have one long one uh, that's going to fucking rip your fucking heart apart, <laughs> um, and, and that, that's the same thing in, in, in trading, you know, when, when, you're, when you're trading, you know, speculative stocks, you don't necessarily want to hold on to them, right, but you kind of know that, you kind of know that, because you're just going to trade it, you get in, get out, Go to something else, you know, get in, get out. You know. um, Short-term trading. Again, if you start to lose, you, you knew the risk going in. Uh, it's not as painful. However, um, you know, you get into something that's, um, that's fairly decent. Okay, let's say like a Boeing. Okay, you get a Boeing. You're like, oh, this is a good stock. It's great. You know, news starts coming out of uh, airplanes falling out of the fucking sky and whatever. 
and 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 you kind of keep holding on to that stock you you don't trade it because you you know it's a long term investment right uh and then it just keeps going lower and lower and lower and lower and before you know it you're down 60% from where where the highs were and then you're just like well you know i'm just going to keep holding it <laughs> right um so that's very painful it's very painful so um you know, try to understand these things in the, in the same kind of manner. Now, the difference is that when you are younger and you're dating a lot more and the relationships come and go much faster, uh, the pain may be severe because <laughs> uh, you, you, you're not used to the, the whole breaking up thing, okay? Uh, so you, you're kind of like, oh. <gasps> I've been rejected, you know, uh, and it's like, because it's new to you, you, you magnify it, you know, you're telling all your friends, you won't shut the fuck up about it, and oh, 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 whatever, uh, but in the grand, grand scheme of things, uh, it, it wasn't really that painful, right, and until you, you meet the real pain later on, <laughs> when it rips your fucking heart, you know, throws it on the ground, starts stepping on it, and shitting all over, and pissing all over it, yeah, that's that's when reality hits, and then you don't talk to anyone about it. You're all depressed. You just you're fucked up, um, and you become pathetic and needy. And uh, you know we always want what we what we don't have. So, um, so what's the solution to all this kind of emotional roller coaster bullshit? Um, I found the best way, and and and. and Everything I say about a relationship is just my view, right? I'm not giving you science here. Just like Marcus, they're not science, okay? Um, the best way to deal with relationships is to be the um, the best that you can possibly be at whatever age you're at, okay? You, you got to think of that this person that I love so much and I, I look into her eyes and I, I just get butterflies and I'm just so happy, right? that that person is going to leave tomorrow. She's going to get up and just dump you, okay? If you think that, you know, I couldn't imagine life without her or whatever, you know what I mean? If you think that every day and, and, and you treat the relationship, you know, the best that you possibly can, later on, when, uh, when, when, when she leaves, not if, when, because 80% of, of, of breakups occur from the woman, uh, when she le leaves, you have you have no regrets. Are you gonna have done some things wrong? Sure, but that's that's normal. That's the cost of doing business. Uh, you have no regrets, and you're like, mm, okay, you know, fine. You know, I, I couldn't do any better, and that is really gonna help with the pain. Okay, that's really gonna help you deal with it a lot better. It's the same thing with stocks, same thing. You want to get good stocks, good entries, something that, you know, you say, look, I couldn't have done any better analysis. Uh, you know, if, if the fuckers were cheating, then, you know, how the fuck am I going to know about it, right? I lost money in this fucking trade. You know, fuck it. Fuck it. M wh what am I going to do with it? I'm going to continue on. I'm going to keep improving myself. Keep improving my trading style um, and, uh, and how to invest better and, and keep growing. And that's, that's a, it's the same thing which, that you would do in a relationship. Okay, she left. All right, whatever. I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. I'm going to eat a little bit healthier. I'm going to, you know, f improve myself. Uh, get a better job or make more money or take more risks. I have more money now to spend. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> Uh, so I can go take risky shit, uh, see if I can make some money, uh, meet new wonderful people, you know, even if they're not going to be the, uh, the next, uh, queen, you know, at least you got to meet people. Um, now if you don't do that, if you don't continue trading and, uh, uh, simulated trading I'm talking about and, and try to learn and improve yourself. And you just, you know, fuck it, I'm not trading again, this thing is fucking game is rigged, it's bullshit, you did that, you, you start doing that, then your career is over. And the same thing uh, that 
you're not going to have a relationship anytime soon because nobody likes that type of attitude. Uh, meaning you're not going to attract anybody <laughs> that's worth uh, anything. You know, you definitely don't want to sit home, eat fucking potato chips and uh, cheeseburgers and KFC and watch TV and jerk off all day, you know. Uh, because that's, you know, believe me, <laughs> that's the last thing you need to fucking be doing uh, once you break up. And, um, you know, we have a saying in Greece, you know, masturbation is a lot of fun. Uh, but with fucking, you get to meet people. <laughs> so, go meet some people. <laughs> All right. So, again, think about these things, right? Uh, when, you, when you're trading, you know, don't, don't get fucking needy. <laughs> don't be that needy guy, you know. Where are you? You know, it's like, what? I just left the house. I'm in, I'm in the garage. But I miss you. Like, okay. The fuck, you know? <laughs> you don't want to be that stage five Klingon, right? Uh, it's the same thing with markets. Don't get needy that you got to make money now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't don't be a stage five fucking Klingon. You know? I want to make money. Well, that's great. I wanted to make money in 2023. I, I did dick. I did nothing, right? Oh, well, <laughs> what can I do? On the other hand, don't be the fucking psycho. Don't be sitting there fucking texting or going outside of a fucking house and screaming and, <laughs> you know, whatever the fuck, you're blaring your fucking music or I don't know what people do, but there's some crazy people out there, don't, you know, don't get fucking crazy. Don't do the same shit with, uh, with training. Don't start punching monitors and, you know, revenge trading and, you know, Going around telling everybody how fucking you know, GameStop is bullshit. <laughs> All right, so think about these things, okay? Uh, lastly, don't be. Um, what do I want to say? Um, I don't want to say cheat. And that that's definitely not what I mean. But when you're in a relationship, you you gotta flirt. Not that you'll do anything. But you got to, you know, keep testing those waters a little bit. Uh, not in a very forward kind of way. Like, hey, what's up, babe? You know, hey, you want to go fuck? <laughs> That's not what I mean. But, yeah, just a little flirtation thing. Why? Why is that important? Um, because you'll feel good about yourself knowing that I could have tapped that. You know what I mean? So that gives you a certain kind of... Um, arrogance, a ma a masculine kind of, you know, little dopamine things, and so when you go see your girl, you're like, yeah, I could have tapped that, but I'm with you, baby, <laughs> you know what I mean, um, uh, you know, if you leave me, eh, no big thing, right, so you gotta think of it like that, um, it, it's healthy, I know it sounds crazy and a little stupid, but it's healthy, it is, you wanna, you wanna keep, keep yourself prime, feeling good, thinking with a positive attitude. Um, <clears throat> it's the same thing with owning stocks, right? You have a good stock, you know, so you go and explore other, other stocks, things that you could uh, have traded, you won't trade, but you'll say, okay, this one is going up, this one is going down, this one, and then you're like, oh, look, you know, I've been right on these stocks. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty confident in, in my trading abilities. Um, you know, next trade that you take, you, you know, you have a good track record, you have a, a, a good system in place, you do it with confidence, it goes a little bit against you, you don't freak out, uh, you're like, okay, whatever, if I lose on this trade, you know, I'll do the next one, and the next one after that, and I'll make money over the course of time, okay, it's the same thing, I, I know, right, so anyway, uh, on to the next thing. Oh, he, she's a high-value woman, or he's a high-value man. Okay, if they're that fucking high-value, why the, don't these people have one person that they're with and happy with? <laughs> right? Doesn't make sense. It's kind of stupid. It's like, oh, yeah, he's high. Well, if he's fucking dating, you know, a hundred women, whatever the hell he's dating... Uh, why can't he find one? One. And be happy with her. And that's it. So if he's if he's not stable, 
then why the fuck, or she, stable, why the fuck do you want to go with her? <laughs> you know? So I, I would equate that to these um, uh, cryptocurrencies, okay? They work great until they don't. And then you lose everything and then some, okay? Um, so be careful of high-value men and women. Uh, they're not always high value, okay? They're traps. You don't want traps, okay? Uh, one day you're the fucking king, the next day you're, you know, garbage. Um, so be careful of those things. You don't need that kind of uh, trading or those kind of relationships. They, they fuck your mind up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't mean that you never do it, okay? Um, I used to hate date, <laughs> as I call it. I used to hate date them, meaning that she was really hot. Everybody fucking wanted her. She was the best. She was great. I finally got her, tap it, and then be like, see ya. I knew what I was getting into. I knew this girl would never last. I knew what she was about. <laughs> you know, I f paraded her around and then just said, see ya. Bye-bye. I was not going to put myself in a situation where I, I, you know, I, I, get, I get blown out by her. You know, she's done it to a thousand other guys. So not necessarily a thousand guys, but, you know, let's say 10 other guys that were really cool dudes, you know, and she just broke their hearts. So that ain't going to be me. Again, you do that on occasion sometimes. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't go out dating, you know, looking to hate date everybody. <laughs> You know, that's a waste of time. All right. Okay, good. Um, the last thing I'll say for tonight is, uh, you know, when you first uh, start to date and uh, you're in a new environment, you always make good friends with the ugly girl. Uh, you know, you, you got to do that. Why? You, you want to be really friendly. You want, yeah, I don't, I'm not saying go out and, and do anything with them, but, you know, they're going to start to like you because you give them attention, okay? Once they start to like you and the word starts getting around, then the not-so-ugly girls are going to start to like you, and then you're going to have a nice reputation as the nice guy and whatever, and then that's going to escalate to the uh, to the beautiful women, the ones that you do want to, to date, Um uh, and then, you know, you get to pick, you know, p choose wisely. You don't want to just, you know, choose the first one that comes along. Uh, choose a good one, you know, get to know them. Choose something that, that's, go that's good, you know. So I would equate that to, you know, buying boring stocks, um, learning how to trade where, you know, you'll take the trade, uh, and, and you're not going to get blown out, right? It's, it's, it's going to be something like, um, I don't know, Verizon or something. I, I, I don't know. Uh, that's a bad one. Um, Exxon Mobil, something like that. Okay. Um, um, maybe not Exxon, maybe Intel. I don't know. Something like that. Something that, you know, if you're wrong, you'll lose, I don't know, 15% in a year or <laughs> something like that. You know, and then if you're right, maybe you'll make 10% in that year. Um, you know, something that's not going to kill you, you know, and this is when you're first starting out trading and so forth, you know, just play with those kind of stocks. And then as, as you start to progress, then you can get a little bit more um, into these, you know, nice, good value stocks. Um, and then from there, the, eventually they'll start to pay you. And then you know, you start getting adding uh, some risk to it, uh, and improving until you get the, the the perfect stock, and then that that stock's gonna ride for a while, for a while. For me, that that would be a med systems. It's not tradable anymore. Uh, it's gonna make you a lot of money. Okay. Uh, the way people usually do it is, you know, they go and start, you know, hitting on. Uh, the hot chicks, the, the good-looking chicks and the whatever, you know, and, and you, you have no reputation, you don't, you know, 
they're like, oh, no, I'm not going out with you. Why are you? You know, whatever. Um, <laughs> and then you get rejected enough, and then you blow out of your account. Because <laughs> you've just been rejected that, you know, the, the fat girls hate you because you never looked at them. <laughs> right? The medium girls, they're like, oh, you know, whatever. He's a nobody. And, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. So do it backwards. Start with the boring stuff if you're new and, you know, and then go from there, okay? And occasionally, always fuck the crazy one. <laughs> they're fun. They're fun. They're crazy. They're batshit crazy, but, you know, they're fun. That that would be like uh, AMC, right? Or uh, Space or uh, maybe even maybe GameStop. That's really fucking crazy. Um, but be careful. I'll tell you a story about this. True story. I won't say the name. Uh, I was at JetBlue Airways, and uh, I was in Boston. I was in the operations, and uh, and I see the police start coming in, and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And uh, there's a pilot sitting there reading the newspaper, and uh, they're like, you know, Officer Timpson, whatever, is uh, looking at him. He's like, are you Bob? He's like, uh, whatever. He's like, uh, yeah, I'm Bob. He's like, yeah, he goes, keep your hands where we can see them stand up. He's like, what? He's a, <laughs> FBI is there, fucking airport security, you know, Boston police, everybody, their mom is there. He's like, what, what, what the fuck happened? He's like, yeah, I'm turning around, you know, they handcuff him, they take him out, and everybody's like, what the fuck happened? Well, here's what happened. The guy was married. He was doing this crazy flight attendant. Uh, eventually, he got tired of her. So he said, you know, he broke it off with her. And she's, you know, they were in an overnight at a hotel. He's like, okay, let's do one last fuck, whatever. Uh, a goodbye fuck or whatever. They do whatever they do. The guy goes in the bathroom to take a shower. She gets up, opens up his laptop. She knew the, the password. Goes in, writes an email from his account to her that I, I love you so much. I'm going to blow the airplane up uh, to prove my love to you and some crazy shit like that. I don't know what, exactly what it said. Right, <laughs> and he goes through the company email. The, you know, the company's like, "What the fuck? This guy's suicidal." And uh, yeah, good luck trying to prove that it wasn't you writing that email. Okay, so that's uh, that's what happened. So be careful with the crazy pictures. <laughs> be careful of GameStop and uh, all these uh, crazy stocks. All right, enough of that for now. All right, let's go through the charts now. So double top, Nasdaq. Um, you know. How many times has price fallen be below the 252-day moving average and held, right? And held, that's the important part. Um, not very often, okay? So if and when it does come down here and falls below the 252-day moving average and we're not in a recession or, you know, you're not seeing those, un uh, those um, unemployment numbers rise and, you know, start seeing something different than what we've been seeing. If it does do that, I think it will be a buying opportunity. Okay. Uh, again, just go 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 back through time. All right. Every time it's below the 252-day moving average, it's popped. All right. Um, however, if and when it does do that, um, it's going to break this structure here. Okay. And breaking this structure is going to be bad juju so if i were to guess gun to head if and when this structure breaks we'll probably be seeing recession recession signals okay that's my guess um so we'll see if this just kind of does like a little normal little pullback here like this or something to that effect and then continues on up, breaks that previous high, um, it's probably going to run for a while based on this. All right. It'll, it'll run maybe maybe to 20,000. Uh, I don't know how much, uh, but it could run two and a half, three thousand 3,000 points uh, in the NASDAQ. And obviously, that's on the high end, okay? Now, um, if it does correct deeper, and it does something like this down here, 
and then starts to pop up again and then breaks, okay, that's probably going to run, okay? That's, that's my thinking right now. Because then, if it's a deeper and a steeper kind of pullback, then you're going to have a rising wedge. If this kind of comes down and corrects through time and does something like this and pushes up, this is probably going to get pushed up, meaning it will look something like, like this, okay? Or like this or something like that. And that's why I keep saying that, you know, 20,000 number. Because when you, when you draw it out structurally, it's going to be a 1, it's going to be a 2, and then this will just keep running to a 3, and then everything will start to fall apart. And then the correction will come. All right? Those are the two scenarios right now. So, again, how this corrects is going to give us some clues as to what we can expect. For right now, uh, I'm not calling it a hook, but I will put it, I will put the line in here and I will make it gray. All right, I'll make it gray. Uh, the next thing I want to say is that this portion here, right, that Santa Claus rally, um, it, it is exactly what we said that, you know, they want to close out the books, so they want to be happy. And nobody's going to sell, and of course, price just kept going up and up and up, and then as soon as the new year came, it started to correct, okay, that, that's all it was, fair enough, uh, why didn't I hold the short, um, I didn't want to hold it, I, I want to see how it's going to function, I'm probably going to regret it, uh, but we'll see, we'll see, I, I, I'm just not, I'm not in that camp that it's going to start to fall apart, uh, immediately, you know, um, uh, maybe it does, and then I'll feel stupid, but for right now, I'll, I'll take that eight, nine grand, whatever it was, and, and I'm more than happy with it, uh, and we'll go from there, all right, so I just kind of switched charts, it's the same one, all right, so, um, you know, uh, let me bring this down a little bit, all right, so, again, the speed that this comes down, is going to matter, um, or the lack thereof, all right, or the lack thereof, so we'll keep an eye on it, this is a wave three, so it's a three of three, okay, don't, don't forget that, so that means it's a one, two, three up, all right, and then this is, this is three, all right, and that's why it's correcting. And that's why I took the short. I had a suspicion that uh, after the new year, they're going to start to sell it off. It was a three already. I felt comfortable. Like double topping. It's a good place to short. All right? So it made sense to me. Good risk reward. I got rewarded. And uh, that's the end of that. All right. Let's take a look at the uh, S&P 500. Also double topping. Uh, Dow Jones, okay, really pushed through. Uh, it's still considered a double top, even though it just broke the high a little bit. Small caps are the ones that got their asses kicked, you know. That's a failed move as far as I'm concerned, all right. That's a failed move. Um, you know, how how far, how deep is this going to go? I, I, don't, I don't know, but that doesn't look good. And, and if you look at the internals, you look at some of the risky uh, uh, stocks, they're not doing very well they're not doing well e even the bitcoins and the other coins they're not doing it. risk right now is get away from me new york stock exchange uh continues to push higher again this looks like to me it's going to be a broken and i don't want to call this a structure you know fully yet because i think it's going to end up looking like this meaning that three is going to be somewhere up here okay um, which means that the two was somewhere back here, all right, um, but I think this is going to start to, to run lower, transportation, right into that resistance failed, again, failed breakout, from failed moves comes fast moves, the Googles of the world not doing much, semiconductors right up to that, uh, area here, that previous high, Never broke through, broke the uptrend line, three of three uh, up, 
So there's a lot of three of threes, all right? Uh, real estate, I think it's just a very wide area here that is just training and chop, fucking all over the place. I think this fails as well based on the other charts. Uh, oil, I had a pullback here, all right? I, I think this is still bullish. I wouldn't call this bearish, okay? So, I wouldn't call, you know, it was a failed move, sure, it had a fast move down, down to, what, 69, okay? I still think this pushes higher. I don't think this is not something to worry about. Now, it could be wrong because, it's at, you know, it's at the bottom of this area here, right? Yeah, okay, pocket says, right? So, it could do something like that, but if it did... Uh, I would just buy more. Definitely, I would buy more. Um, so, uh, taking a look at Google and Apple, right? Right into that. That's the fourth time it came up to this area and failed. Um, it's still bullish, but um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, we'll we'll have to wait and see. That's I don't know. We'll see. Uh, skip that. Don't want to see that right now. All right, cryptos. All right, big fucking move to the downside. Um, almost a hook. You can't consider it a hook. That's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, Bitcoin. Okay. There it is. Again, I wouldn't call it a hook just yet. It's still kind of high basing. But, again, it, it's tired, this thing. It's tired. Ethereum, right? This is about to start to break down. All right? It's it's just struggling with this uptrend line. It's not doing it. It's not, you know, pushing through. Salona, everybody's so fucking uh, Salana. Uh, they're so excited about it. That this is going to end up ugly. That's my, that's my prediction. Yes, it's the new, greatest, coolest thing everybody's going to run to. But I think it's going to end up puking it back down. Uh, Matic, failed move, came a fast move, back down. All right. Uh, Litecoin, you know, the, th the thing about Litecoin is it had a structure below a structure, and it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is to break down. However, right now, it's hovering right at that support line. All right. Um, coin, somebody was asking about coin. Uh, VA, I think. A uh, huge move to the upside. Now, let's talk a little bit about coin. Remember I kept saying that, you know, this one is going to survive um, while all the other ones are blowing up. It's a good value. It's a good value. It's a good value. I never traded it. Unfortunately, I never traded it. Um, and it ran. And, and and I'm going to say it again. Good traders have a lot of these missed, op missed opportunities, a lot of them. And, and that's what you want, okay? And that's when, when you have your portfolio, and I say, you know, you keep, you keep flirting, right? Uh, that, that's what I mean. You keep looking at other asset classes, and you're saying, okay, you know, I think this one's going to go up. I think this is going to go down. This, this is one of these um, uh, examples, right? I knew it was going to go higher. The fact that I didn't trade it, I could have tapped that ass. <laughs> uh that's a victory for me. That's a victory for me, okay? Uh, even though I didn't trade it, I didn't make a dime out of it. But, again, it did what it was supposed to do. However, it's way the fuck overvalued right now. If you make it, if your profits come from from uh, interest rates, then, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do when interest rates start to fall? You're fucked, okay? So, to me, it's overvalued. All right, good. Uh, what else should we look at? Um you know, the um, the one-year yield is, a, a, again, I don't see this really starting to fall uh, deep unless rates start to come down. We hit a recession, blah, blah, blah. Same thing with the two-year, the 10-year, okay? Uh, it's broken. Again, don't be expecting this thing to, to waterfall unless we're hitting a recession, Fed's lowering rates, blah, blah, blah. All right, good. Um, commodities. Okay, uh, maybe a structure above a structure or maybe ex expansion, you know, uh, I'll keep it like this for now. 
Uh, I'll review it later. Um, where's gold? There's gold. Again, we're waiting for that breakout. It, it falls right back down. Um, you know, again, I th I think it's bullish. What else? Uh, uh, the um, agriculture fund DBA crack right continues to go lower. Again, you're seeing commodities start to come down. Food inflation is over. I have that printed somewhere. I posted it. There it is. Okay. Um, inflation is over. So that's good. Um, I didn't trade it again, but again, I was flirting with it. I could tap that ass. Uh, <laughs> what else? Uh, dollar. Let's talk about the dollar. All right. It, it had to correct, so that's fine. It's not telling us a whole hell of a lot. It's below the 252-day moving average. It's below the 63-day moving average. Um, or 61, did I say 63? Um, so can it pop a little bit here? Sure. But again, you know, I, I think it's long, longer term bearish for the dollar. There was a little bit of a pop in the dollar, Japanese yen. Again, if it pops a little bit more, I would look to short it. All right. Somebody, uh, uh, Jason, I think, was asking me about the euro. If you're looking at it from this perspective here, right there, let me change the color. If you look at it from this perspective here, uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't short it, because this part here, I would look for a, for for a bounce as a trade not a longer term investment i would look for a buy um in the bigger picture to the middle of fucking nowhere you know if it breaks you can cut the uh the trade and short it immediately but uh, initially i would look for the buy okay uh what else all right let's go through the fags here all right, here's Apple. Let me go down to a four hour. All right. uh, Apple, okay, double topping or triple, quadruple topping. Google, right? That, I, I'm going to consider this a head test. All right, you had a uh, uh, yeah, head and shoulders. You have a uh, head test, and then this is now reversing. Uh, Microsoft, give me one second. Um, Again, triple topping, NVIDIA, all right, there it is, uh, quite triple topping, I guess, Meta, Amazon, Tesla, all right, now let's look at Tesla here a little bit, this thing is broken for the second time it cracked, so I think this can really start running uh, here, keep an eye on it, Netflix, all right, this is probably going to start to crack. Uh, Spotify. Um, I don't know what these things are. Why the fuck am I looking at PayPal? Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it, guys. All right. So thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> I hope you found this a little bit entertaining, uh, educational. Uh, it's a little bit different. Um, and, um, you know, We'll see how we're going to run with this. This was the intro, obviously, today. Um, so it'll stay around for a while, this video. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll go from there. And let's see what's going to happen in 2024. A few changes. It's going to be fun. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.